This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by Netflix. Apple isn't the only one holding an event this week. PC Purr's Ryan Strout joins us fresh from the opening keynote at the Intel Developer Forum. Dude, is Haswell dead yet? Do we all need to return our notebooks? Absolutely not. They're launching new Haswell parts still. Really? Oh, a lot of them. Well, what was, well I should ask, what was the biggest news at the keynote? You know, Intel telling the world that it's going to take over phones? They didn't talk about phones hardly at all, just a, just a little bit. They're okay. more focused on their low power is still the, the big draw now. So the biggest announcement was uh, probably Bay Trail platform. That is a Silvermont-based architecture. It's an Atom-branded part, but it's completely re-architected. It's not like any other Atom. It's like Atom, but you can actually do things with it without weeping. Right. Okay. So what they were able to do with Bay Trail is create a part that is in the same power envelope as the Atoms that were in you know, some of the Lenovo tabs and that kind sure. of thing. But 3 to 4x the CPU performance and 4, 4x the GPU performance. That is a big deal. How are they doing that? that? I mean, that's just a huge performance yep. increase at the same power level. A lot of it is a shift. So you got to remember the Atom architecture since its you know, inception five, six years ago mm -hmm. was based on a Pentium core right. that they just kept shrinking and improving a little bit and, and changing. This is a completely new architecture. It's, so, it's an out of order design instead of an in order, okay. which just means it can be more efficient. It's quad core, no hyper threading. Um, but they're able to get, uh, obviously, a lot more performance and efficiency from it. So basically, they went from a, a nearly 20-year-old design to a two- or three-year-old design. <laughs> yeah, the I mean, the original Atom was just something they took off the shelf mm -hmm. because they're like, oh, there's a thing called netbooks. We need to make a part for this. Okay. And just kind of built it very, very quickly. This was something that, you know, they said, once they realized that this was their future was low power, mm -hmm. these new form factors that they needed to focus on it, then they put a team in place to develop a new part. Cool. Yeah. Do you think they're going to rebrand it because of, of all the animosity towards the Atom name? I really wish they were going to, but they're not. It's the Atom Z3000 series. So the flagship part is the 3770, maybe which should sound familiar to desktop users. Maybe the little blue tag will say it's it's Atom, except you can usually use Windows on it. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's a little weird. Uh, you know, They obviously think that there's a lot of equity in that brand, and it's been around for a while, and it, it's known. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's... I, I disagree with it, but that's what they decided to do. <laughs> Fools, they didn't yeah. consult with you first. <laughs> Big news from AMD a couple of weeks ago, the idea that AMD's like, hey, we're all APU now, deal with it. Um, in, the, in the sense that every CPU they make is going to have integrated graphics on board in a big way, because obviously AMD's big in the graphics space now, right. or has been for a while. But um, is there any indication that Intel's pretty much going to do the same thing? Any updates on Intel's graphics? Um, so in Baytro, the graphics mm -hmm. is, is, is drastically improved. Haswell, when it was released, had drastically improved graphics. Pretty much every part except for server and workstation CPUs are going to come out with, with graphics in it. Okay. So, I mean, what we're, what we're turning into now is instead of processors, they're all SOCs. They're all system on a chip. They all have the I.O. embedded, the graphics embedded, the processor embedded. All of that is on, is on a single piece of silicon. And pretty soon they're going to permanently attach it to a motherboard and the motherboard market will go away, right? Yeah, that, that's the fear, right, with Broadwell. It's, it's, it's actually... That was a joke. It's, it's not. So with Broadwell, there's discussion about it being BGA only, so oh, wow. no more socketed parts. We don't know if that's actually going to be the case. They showed off Broadwell, which is the next mm -hmm. desktop kind of consumer uh, laptop part, 14 nanometer, sure. new architecture. Uh, and, and they showed off that just a little bit. They had a demo system sure. that was, I think they played Cut the Rope or something like that. So nothing very compute intensive. <laughs> But you know, at this point, it's just, hey, we're in Windows and it's stable. This is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> taping, the early taping out is sometimes fraught with pain and suffering. So uh, do you anticipate any point in the next, say, two years where the onboard graphics are going to be fast enough that you won't want, as a gamer, not as a typical day-to-day -day user, but as a gamer, you will no longer want a discrete GPU? Uh, in two years, I would say not. OK. Right? In, in, the, your, the, the segmentation there is very important, right? So as a gamer, as a PC gamer, AMD and NVIDIA on the graphics side in terms of GeForce and Radeon brands are still iterating fairly quickly in terms of what performance they get out of their GPUs. And on the SOC side, on the APUs from AMD and these new processors from Intel, they're iterating as well, but they're always going to be a little bit behind. There's no way you're going to be able to fit you know, the, like if you look at it today, where you have a, a three billion transistor GPU from right. NVIDIA onto, you know, if you look at Ivy Bridge E, it's 1.86 billion right. transistors. So. I mean, and let's make that clear. Two, two and a half times as many transistors on the GPU yep. as on the CPU. That is a 
huge number of transistors. Yeah, it is, and and I don't, I don't, I think you know, 4K is going to be a thing in the next 12 months. You know, those prices are going to get cut in half on those monitors. So there's going to be reasons to have higher end GPUs. Okay. We were stuck on 1080p since like 1980, 1997, I guess is what it was right. when that came out. And 4K is, is really going to be something that, that pushes forward. And I think for gamers and enthusiasts, there's, there's definitely still going to be a need for discrete graphics. Okay. Yeah, it, it's funny because we've, we've talked about this several times on, on, on this week in computer hardware. We're like, yeah, if you're gaming at 1080p, you don't need a $1,000 GPU. Absolutely. Uh, if, you're, if you have three 1080p monitors, you start doing something useful with a $1,000 GPU. And if you have a 4K monitor, oh my goodness, you need a $1,000 GPU. I mean, 4K is 8 million pixels. That's a lot of pixels. It's a lot. I mean, you're four times as many as you had on 1080p, and, and it, it puts a lot more pressure on, uh, on GPUs. PCPro.com, you recently, uh, ha has anyone pried that 4K desktop monitor out of your Not hands? yet. They keep trying. They keep <laughs> trying to get the 4K monitors back from us, and we just keep finding ways to stall them and delay them. So that's where our big research and kind of progress is now on the desktop side is how does a CPU affect 4K sure. performance? How does you know, a GPU affect 4K performance, which is obviously the fundamental problem there. Right. And then when you're at 4K today, you need multiple GPUs. So how do those multi-GPU configurations really work from both sides? And of course, this is all going to shift a little bit with HDMI 2.0. Um. Yeah, <laughs> it could. So I mean, the, the fundamental performance right. won't change. But the idea of, you know, do you need two cables? Do you have to use DisplayPort, sure. multi-stream transport technologies? Anything that simplifies it, I'm for, because it's not as easy as it should be today. That was one of the, the funny sort of side emails as people were pitching, like, Asus, we're showing off this, or so-and-so is showing off that, and DisplayPort was like, we already do 4K at 60 hertz. Yeah. And it's like, so yeah. are there any monitors with DisplayPort Yeah, I mean, 4K? all the 4Ks use DisplayPort. Okay. They have to. Like, well, if you take all the, the TVs 4K out of the equation. All the 4K computer monitors. Correct. Okay. Not the TVs or, or anything like that that are running on HDMI single input 30 hertz signals. So, you know, it really needs to, 4K at 30 hertz mm -hmm. is not a great experience. 4K at 60 hertz mm -hmm. is, is, is a very good experience. And, and the quicker we move to that, the better. And is that a 32 inch Asus monitor you have yeah. on your desktop right now? Yeah, it's 32. Running at 60 32 hertz? inch 4K. And they will pry it from you when they pry it from your cold, dead fingers? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if it comes to that, they can have it back and I'll, or I could buy it from them or something. But yeah, you know, it's for us, it's the primary focus of GPU mm -hmm. testing. Okay. You know, is where are the highest resolutions, where are the worst case scenarios, right? Because at 1080p, it's not a very exciting story. Right. You don't, you can buy a $200 graphics card and be very competent. What about writing and editing and, and browsing? I mean, is, because 4K it just seems like the real estate is so amazing as a computer mm -hmm. user. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do that without, if you're not doing gaming, any current generation, mm -hmm almost any current generation NVIDIA and AMD card mm -hmm. will run a 4K screen. Right. Um, if it has DisplayPort, it can use multi-stream transport, and you should be good to go. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can take advantage of it from video editing, image editing, all that. You know, if you're editing 4K video, that's a totally different story in terms of CPU performance that right. you're heading to look at. But the experience of using a 4K monitor is, is pretty awesome. It's just, I mean, it's just, it's just rich and detailed. There's so many pixels, and it looks so glorious. And yeah. And we just need more of these. Can we have a, a nice $300 4K 60 hertz desktop monitor? Just saying. If you wait maybe 36 months. That's it? Yeah, sure. I get mad at that. All right. Oh, my goodness. So uh, IDF, did we miss anything with the IDF keynote? Uh, so the Betra was the, was the big story for Intel. They also announced uh, a whole new series of Haswell mm -hmm. Now they're calling them two-in-ones. They used to be called convertibles, okay. but now they're two-in-ones, so they're, they're pushing heavily into that. Haswell at the higher end for mm -hmm. notebooks, Baytrail on the lower end for those notebooks. They talked about uh, a Haswell Y processor, mm -hmm. which is a, it's a fourth generation processor, but it has a uh, expected power envelope of 4.5 watts. Wow. So now we're getting into slates and fanless designs. Uh, a lot of really cool things in that regard. And then it, the only thing they showed in phones was uh, they, they held up a like kind of a reference style phone built on 22 nanometer, same architecture as Bay Trail, but it's called Merrifield. Merrifield. So they're, they're still pushing down <laughs> that, uh, that path, we but just I think a little bit later than business. we expected. Yeah. Okay. So the, yeah. the fight continues. You know, actually, I guess I do want to mention the other thing was Quark. 
Intel Core. This was a surprise to everybody. They announced this at a keynote. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, a processor core that is a fifth the size of Atom and a tenth the power of Atom. Interesting. And it's meant to be uh, configured with additional third-party IP, similar to what ARM does. Uh, they're not licensing the core architecture them itself, but they're licensing connections to that fabric so that people will be able to build embedded systems, I was wearables, say, all that kind of stuff. They're trying to get into that play. The Internet as of well. Things. The Internet of Things. And rice cookers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's, their, that's their big play into the ARM kind of licensing ecosystem. Uh, <laughs> Adam's not somewhere. working. The phones aren't working. Let's try to go a little bit deeper. Yeah. Quark. That's, that's quite a name. It, it's a very, yeah, it is. Adam, Quark. Glue on. I guess they just keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ryan Trout, PCPer.com is the place to go. Excellent product reviews, outstanding analysis, PCPer.com. Go there today. Right now, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Tired of watching the same old shows and programs on TV? Well, with Netflix, you can instantly watch thousands of movies and TV shows, both recent and classic, whenever you want, wherever you want, for just one low monthly price. With more than 26 million members, Netflix is the world's leading internet subscription service for enjoying movies and TV programs. Instantly watch from the comfort of your couch via an Xbox 360, PS3, Wii, or Netflix-enabled HDTV or set-top box. And as a Netflix member, all of this is just for one low monthly price. There are no late fees or due dates. Plus, as a new member and a Texilla viewer, you can get a free 30-day trial membership. Go to Netflix.com slash Texilla to sign up and be sure to use this URL so they know we sent you.